and salutations. Welcome to another FAQ Monday. I am your host, Fluff. And if you have a question, feel free to leave them on down below in the comments or tweet at me or, uh, I don't know, send up smoke signals, do whatever you gotta do to ask me the question. I'll see it at some point. I asked you this over Twitter a while ago, but I'd like to hear a verbal review. How is the Kurt Cobain Jaguar? Um, thank you for your question, Jack Burberry at my Christmas tree. Uh, the Kurt Jaguar is awesome. Uh, now, I have never owned one. I have sat down and played one uh, a few times at two different NAMs in the Fender booth. Um, and I believe they don't make them anymore, but you can still kind of find them. They're in that weird transitional period. Um, it's cool because two humbuckers, it, it's, it's basically a short scale rock machine. Now, I don't personally like a guitar with that short of scale. I think it's like a 24 inch scale or 24 and a little bit, 24 and some change scale. I believe it's shorter than a Les Paul, is it not? Or the same as Les Paul? I think it's shorter than a Les Paul. But anyway, it's not a full scale like a Jazz Master. It's not a 25 and a half inch scale. It felt very, very short and slinky to me. However, it's definitely more beefy with the two humbuckers and some Marge of Super Distortions. It's a cool guitar. And you can find them used for, I think a thousand bucks, something like that, 1, 1200 bucks, depending. But uh, yeah, great guitar. Which Nickelback album has the best sounding mix? Ooh, good question, Rev Zachary. Um, let's see, I have to look up all their albums because I know the covers. Um, okay. So, there are some really, really bad sounding Nickelback mixes, in my opinion. There's also some really, really good sounding ones. Now, in my opinion, most of their newer stuff is way, 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 way over compressed and everything generally sounds pretty good, but the guitar tones very widely, in my opinion. Uh, back in the day, they used Amp Farm, Line 6 Amp Farm mixed with a dual rectifier or triple rectifier. It sounds awful. Anyway, um, I think No Fixed Address sounds amazing. I also think Silver Side Up is their best sounding record. 2001, the very, the first one that we all know, because we're all Nickelback fans, right? Don't leave hate in the comments for Nickelback. You know what, they sell out arenas and they're rich doing what they want to do and they write their own stuff. You can't hate on that. Um, also, they're one of the best live bands ever. So you can't take that away from them. Anyway, Silver Side Up is probably my favorite sounding Nickelback album. However, No Fixed Address, is really, really great sounding as well. Sounds huge, it's thick, the guitars cut. It's really, really nice. So yeah, those two, Nickelback, I back it. How would you make a fuzz work live? Ooh, that's a great question. So a fuzz pedal under a microphone is obviously very, very fuzzy. It's very, very crunchy and live, you do want some, some definition. You want to be able to hear, you know, you don't want to bury yourself totally in a fuzz pedal, but you still want to use a fuzz pedal if you're doing like Doom or Stoner Rock, right? The key to making a fuzz work in a live setting is a lot of volume, but having a very clean amp and not crazy hot pickups. Um, so, uh, Smashing Pumpkins or Fu Manchu as an example, you know, Scott in Fu Manchu used uh, a Fender Jag forever with low output single coil pickups going into a super clean Marshall. And that works. You know, he had a, uh, a super fuzz. Sometimes he has a big muff. But uh, what I would do is get the cleanest speakers, get the cleanest amp, get the cleanest sounding guitar and let that fuzz do the work. You don't want to overpower the fuzz and muddy it up or anything like that. That's, that's how you're going to get it to work live. Also, compression is gonna be probably a good thing as well, and some selective EQ. If you wanna scoop out some of the low mids, get some more pick definition, that is probably gonna work as well. But yeah, don't go too nuts on the fuzz. Clean amp, clean guitar, you should be good to go. Have you ever fell out of love slash motivation for music and playing? And if so, any advice to combat it? That's a great question, Cameron. Um, I have, I have totally fallen out of love with music and guitar playing. Um, so back in like 2005, when I ended up being homeless in California after moving down there with my band, 
I was eating every couple of days and able to shower about once every other week. It sucked. And I was legit homeless. And in my mind, what got me there was my own music and the guitar. Like, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain at that time. I was 25 years old, I was young, and I was trying to, uh, you know, take a step at the world, I guess, is what uh, what you'd call it. I was trying to do my own thing. I was trying to, you know, move away from my support structure, my family up here in the Pacific Northwest. And I just wanted to go do my own thing and be my own man, and I failed at it. And I kind of looked at the guitar as doing that to me, when obviously that's my own decision. But um, that's what got me there was my pursuit of music. And so I sold my two Randall RG100ES half stacks for $250 because that's all I could get for them. And that was just enough gas money uh, to get home and enough money to buy, I think we stopped once for a burger, me and my buddy Derek. Hi Derek, I don't know if you are watching this. But uh, we, we limped back home barely we barely made it home and for about I would say for about a year and a half year and a half two years I I didn't really pick up the guitar at all I was so mad at it and I was so angry at what music had done to me it just really chewed me up and spit me out um and that's okay like those things will happen and that's okay to feel that way um give it time if you feel that way so you know explore other things. Life is about living and exploring various things. Uh, I got into, or I really got into my career at Boeing, honestly. Um, I didn't jam in any bands or anything like that. I did get into home recording though, which led to me doing this YouTube channel. So I can't say that it was all bad and it wasn't all doom and gloom. And through learning how to record and me falling in love with the the art of recording and capturing audio and manipulating it in post, I kind of got back into playing guitar again. So that wasn't on purpose. That wasn't by design. That's just kind of something that happened. But for almost two solid years, that guitar sat in the closet of my Strat, sat in the closet of my bedroom, and I didn't even look or touch that thing at all. Funny to think about now, but it's really what I needed mentally. And that's okay. Breaks are good. Why do all your Music Man guitars have a vibrato system if you never use it? Uh, that's because Music Man won't make me any without them. <laughs> that's the simple truth. I asked for hardtail uh, stingrays, but they're like, no, we don't really want to do that. I'm like, yeah, okay. And it really, it's not that big of a deal because you know, a hardtail or the two point, either way, it's sitting on the body just the same. I do ask for hardtail stingrays. Whatever, simple. It's a, it's a simple, small thing, but it's a good question. But yeah, I, I don't know, they, they won't make them for me. <laughs> Who had the best guitar tone from the Seattle grunge scene? Ooh. Um, I don't know if I could pick just one, although immediately what comes to mind is Jerry Cantrell, honestly. Uh, he sounded so good then and now. He just, he has the best guitar tone ever, in my opinion. Um, other bands that had really, really great guitar tones in the grunge era though, Grunt Truck. I will link down below to all these bands, by the way. Uh, Grunt Truck and Tad. Tad sounded great. Um, Screaming Trees sounded great. Pearl Jam had great guitar tone too. But if I had to choose just one for my money, I'm choosing Jay Cantrell and Allison Chains. No one sounded better in the grunge era than they did. And that does it for this episode of FAQ Monday. If you have a question, feel free to leave it on down below in the comments or uh, tweet at me or something. But uh, either way, I appreciate you watching this episode of FAQ Monday. And with that, I'm gonna get out of here. Fluff out. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, please consider subscribing. It helps me help you, and then in turn, you get more stuff to watch. And also, I have all sorts of stuff down in the description of this video. Sweetwater giveaway stuff, there's all sorts of links to all sorts of things, so consider uh, checking that out as well, if you're gonna hang. But if you don't hang, all good. I still love you. <laughs>